Hi, everybody. It's Cassandra again. Thank you for joining our second presentation of today's online college block party. This web series celebrates first-gen college and underrepresented students on their journey to and through college. I hope you guys enjoyed the previous presentation with Northwestern University. Patrick and Paul were awesome. Um, and just in case you're joining us now and missed that presentation, don't worry about it. We're going to send you the recording to watch the replay later. So for those of you that are first joining, um, before we get started, some tips to get the most out of the college block party. Uh, use the live chat feature to the right and chat with others in the group. Um, feel free to introduce yourself if you haven't yet. And if you have a question, use the ask the question tool below. Uh, no right or wrong questions, of course, but try to avoid asking anything too specific about your GPA, your test scores, any admissions chances, uh, because colleges can't provide you with the best answer without seeing your full application. If you're curious about your admission chances, visit capex.com forward slash greenlight dash student and explore over 3,000 college profiles and learn more from our CapEx insights. If you are joining us live, be sure to join the conversation on Twitter at hashtag online college block party. And good news, we still have a lot in store for you today. The team at Col Colby College is here and right after we'll have Colorado College as well. So if you guys are excited to continue into the next presentation, we definitely are. We are thrilled to have Mesa Robinoff, Assistant Director of Admissions, to demystify the personal statement, understanding its role in the application review process in the age of COVID-19, and spending some time talking about how to actually put pen to paper and get writing. Her colleague, Louis Toledo, will also be joining us, answering your questions in the chat box as well. Mesa, welcome to the College Black Party stage. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here with you all. I'm so excited to spend some time tonight talking a little bit about the personal statement. So as Cassandra mentioned, my name's Mesa. I am one of the assistant directors at Colby and I am joined by my fantastic colleague, Lewis, um, who will be in the chat and in the Q&A answering some questions. Um, but just to set some expectations, give you an idea of what we're gonna talk a little bit about tonight. We're gonna not only spend some time unpacking the role of the personal essay and the personal statement in the college admissions process, but we're also gonna talk a little bit about how to get started writing and what different styles of writing work for different kinds of stories and how to know if you're writing a personal essay the right way. Um, and so I'm gonna do my best to sort of give you some tips and tricks from my experience reading a lot of personal essays, probably, let's see, this is my, over my fourth year in admissions. So like probably like 4,000 personal essays. So I like to hope that I have a little bit of, um, of an understanding of, of personal essays and, and how to have your essay make an impact in your application process. So with that being said, we are gonna dive right in and talk, start talking just about um, the role of the personal statement. So I have found that for students, the personal statement is one of the most confusing and anxiety provoking pieces of the college application process. The process is stressful to begin with, but there's just something about the personal statement that is a little bit mysterious and a little bit scary. Um, and so we are gonna talk about sort of what the role of the personal statement is. Why do colleges have you write one to begin with? And the sort of simple, straightforward answer to that question is that we're trying to figure out who you are. So, you know, who is Lewis? Who is Mesa? Um, that is really the question that we're trying to answer throughout the process of reading your application, is figuring out who you are now, who you hope to be in the future, and how our institution can get you from point A to point B. And so when we sit down with a personal statement, really what we're looking for is to get a little sense of your personality, your lived experiences, and your interests. Um, and hopefully to learn a little bit about you that doesn't come through in the other pieces of your application. So we'll learn a lot about you in your transcript, in the classes that, from the classes that you've taken, in the letters of recommendation that you submit, in the activities that you list, um, if you have a part-time job or you support your family babysitting after school, whatever it is that you do, we'll learn a lot about you that way. 
But the personal statement is really the only spot in your application where we get to hear directly from you in your voice, your personality. Um, and so that's why it's really important is because we're looking to, to find out who you are and that's one of the few places that we can find it. Um, something to note that I think a lot of students struggle with is what the personal statement should not be. So the personal statement should not be your uh, cover letter or a summary of your resume. It also should not be your entire autobiography. We are not expecting you to cram everything that has happened to you in your life up until the time that you apply to college into one personal essay. Um, and so I think a lot of times students feel pressured to put all of themselves onto paper um, and try to somehow show every aspect of themselves in one essay. And that is just not possible. And that's not what we're asking you to do. Um, what we're asking you to do is just show a little sliver of, of yourself, of your personality, of your sense of humor, whatever it is that you choose to share with us, that is what we're really looking for in the personal statement is to hopefully get a little bit of a better sense of who you are. Like if we pop down next to you at Starbucks um, and we struck up a, a conversation, that's the sort of sense that we're hoping to get from your personal statement. And so maybe you have a topic already in mind, but things to remember as you get ready to put pen to paper and or fingers to keyboard if you're, you're typing your essay, which you probably are in this day and age. I wrote mine on lined paper with pen, um, but I am much older than you, um, is to write about something that matters to you. Um, so there is no perfect college essay topic. Um, you want to make sure that you are writing about something that is special to you or that matters to you, something that resonates with you. Um, because when you're writing about something that you feel connected to, when you write about something that you're passionate about, that essay is going to be so much better than if you force yourself to write about a topic that you think someone like me wants to read about. Really, what I want to read about is what you have to say. Um, and so as you sort of start thinking about your topics or after you've chosen your topic, really think about what that topic means to you, why it matters, and why it should be sort of at the heart of your personal statement. Something else that's really important to remember, and I think this is one of the most common sort of missteps that students make when they're writing their personal statements, is that they don't make themselves the main character of their own story. So I want you, when you sit down to write your, your personal statement, to make yourself the protagonist of that story. Make yourself the main character because you are the main character. You are the person that we want to learn about and hear about. And so it's really important that you're using I statements um, and that you're connecting everything that you write about back to you and who you are and who you want to be. So even if you choose to write about a person or a place that has had an impact on you, that's fantastic. But make sure that at the end of the day, it's still about you and not about the person that you choose to write about or the place that you choose to write about, but that it is about that person or that place's impact on you. And so the last piece of this um is another challenging piece for students and that's to let the reader in so let someone like me in and be a little bit vulnerable don't just write about what write about the why so don't just talk about a place or talk about a person talk about you know who they are to you and what impact they've had on you and why have you devoted this really important essay to that person or to that place or to that event. That is such an important dedication, right? This is a, one of the most important essays that you're gonna write and you've chosen this person or this place or this event to write about and that means something and we wanna know why. And so it's really important that that message comes through. So not only are you sort of the main character of your own story, but that you're centering yourself in that narrative about this person or about that place so that we can learn even more about you and where you've come from and sort of what has shaped you on your journey to applying to our particular institution. Now I wanna stop just for a second um, 
and sort of unpack what I mean by be vulnerable, because I think it's really important to understand what I mean when I say that. Um, I think there is a perception or I have seen in sort of my experience in college admissions that there is a perception that you really have to write about something that has been huge in your life, a really big loss or maybe something that was really traumatic for you. Um, and I think a lot of times students pressure themselves to write about something that maybe they're not ready to share, maybe they don't want to share, but they feel like they have to um, to make that sort of impact. And so what I would say to you is, if you have chosen a topic and you write it and it just isn't feeling right, it feels like it's not the time to share and you're not ready to share that with with a stranger with someone that you don't know trust that feeling honor that feeling that is that is okay i have read amazing essays about something as simple as a rubik's cube or brewing a cup of tea so if you've experienced something that is deeply personal that has deeply impacted you i want you to take ownership of that experience and decide for yourself whether it is something that you want to share with us. And if you decide to do that, please know that your story, your narrative is safe with us. We take our jobs super seriously and we take your privacy and honoring those stories really seriously. Um, but if you're not ready to share or if it's not something that feels right for you to share, it is also okay to trust that feeling. Um, and so let your brain sort of wander across, you know, sometimes students will try journaling for a couple of weeks to see if that gets sort of the creative juices flowing if you're struggling to come up with a topic. I see Jessica in the chat um, mentioned like her mentor told her to record herself talking. That's another really fantastic idea to get things going. Um, but it's okay to write a couple of drafts about what you might want to write your personal essay about, right? You might pick a topic and write a whole whole essay and then decide that maybe that's not the topic that you want to talk about. Um, and so that is that is okay. It is okay to take a couple of of drafts to figure out really what story you want to tell and what it is about yourself that you would like to choose to share with us. So I just wanted to take a minute to to unpack the word vulnerable because I don't necessarily mean sort of mining your own experiences and your own trauma if that's not something that you're comfortable with. I just mean let us in and let us in as far and as much as you are comfortable with. And that's that's what I mean by be vulnerable. So thinking about the actual writing process now that we have our topic and we think we know you know why we've chosen this story or why it matters to us, what the impact is on us. Um, there are a couple of ways to write it. One of the more common approaches is a narrative essay, and this often depicts action. So it involves a story, and sometimes the essay might start right in the middle of the action, right in the middle of the story, or it might go through in chronological order. And that's really a decision um, that that you get to, to make for yourself based on what feels right. Um, it could be that the entire story is the entire essay. It could be that just a piece of that story is an anecdote that or that supports sort of your overall theme. Um, but it's important, again, going back to what I talked about earlier about moving past the what and into the why, think about your thoughts and feelings around that event, right? What did that event or that moment mean for you? What did that moment in time do for you? Um, how has it changed you or how did it change your perspective? What is the action of that story that you're telling and what does it say about you? What impact has it had? And so it's really important before you just sort of jump into writing to ask yourself these questions, right? Unpack that story a little bit for yourself. I think so often because we lived these moments, we assume that we can just dive right in and write about them. But I would ask um, and encourage you to take a step back for a minute and really sort of reflect on your own stories and your own narrative and what you understand about that event and how it has sort of played a role in your life. Um, because the more that you can guide that story um, with that sort of reflection, the more meaningful, the more impactful your words are going to be. And again, that story should serve as evidence of sort of your larger point, right? So maybe you're telling a story um, about 
stage fright and overcoming stage fright to audition for your, for like a musical, right? I'm making this up on the spot. Um, telling that story about that audition, challenging yourself to sort of overcome that fear. Overcoming the fear is the larger point, right? Being, taking um, initiative and putting yourself out there is the larger point. And the story about getting up and going through that audition process, that is sort of the vehicle through which you're telling that story. So those are just some things to keep in mind. Not every essay though is gonna have a narrative sort of approach or a story. There are many other ways to approach actually writing your essay um, and talking about your essay. And so, Again, sort of going back to thinking about what you choose to write about, you might write about a place or a person, and that is gonna be sort of your thesis statement. So if we think about it from a more academic perspective, if we take a step back and really sort of think about the structure of the essay as well, um, that sort of topic, that person, that place is gonna be your thesis statement but it isn't the topic of the essay, right? I want you, every time you sit down with your, um, with your college essay to remind yourself, I am the main character of my own story, right? Like that should be your mantra when you're writing your personal statement. Um, that, is, that is the message to remind yourself. I am the main character of my own story because this moment is all about you. It is all about the work that you've put in, not only in your classes throughout your four years of high school, but every moment sort of leading up to this moment. And so it's important to really take ownership of that, to be excited about that, um, and to center yourself in that moment, right? Students are so often afraid to brag about the, the accomplishments um, and the things that they've achieved, this is your moment to brag, right? I am giving you permission to brag about all of the things that you have achieved because I will tell you, you've achieved, each of you, uh, more than you even know at this moment in time. And when you step back and you think about it, years from now once you've all sort of graduated from college and you're thinking about oh remember that time we had to write personal essays you'll think back on this time and be like wow i was awesome i'm i was awesome and that college definitely should have accepted me because i had achieved a lot and i was going to make their community better um, and so really owning that, owning that space and making it your own and using that personal essay to share your voice, to share what essay is all about. It's really owning that moment for yourself and saying, this is who I am and I'm really proud of it and I'm really excited about this next chapter. Um, that is what we hope to see in the personal essay. And as we'll see in a minute, there are a bunch of different paths to get there. There is no sort of one straight shot to get from point A to point B. Um, but at the end, you're all sort of working towards this common goal of sharing your voices and sharing your stories so that people like me sitting sort of in an office far away from wherever you are in the country can say, wow, the student is awesome. And we would love for them to be a part of our community. Um, and so that's what we want to learn about you, right? Never forget to focus on why that place or that person matters to you because you are the main character. You are the whole reason that we are here tonight. Um, it's because of you. And so it's really important to, to really let that in and remind yourself that this is, this is something that you deserve. You deserve to give yourself the time to be the main character of your own story um, because you've worked hard enough to, to get there. So we are gonna do a little bit of an exercise now. Um, and so congratulations. You are all suddenly admissions directors at a top tier US university. You work with me and Lewis. Um, we're super excited to have you on the team and it is application review season. And so we have, I have collected sort of two excerpts of essays 
um, that were sort of like available online. I just wanted to show you a couple of examples of what it looks like so that you can compare and contrast and really see sort of what two examples would look like, two students who took very, very different approaches to their essays. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sort of flip the, flip the slide in a minute and I'm gonna leave that essay up for a second um, so that you guys can read through it and take a few notes. And then and about two, after about two to three minutes, I'll flip the slide again um, and we will read the second sort of excerpt of a personal essay. And then I'm gonna have you in the chat sort of let me know which, which essay did you prefer and why? What was sort of what stood out to you most about the excerpt that you read? And again, these are not complete essays. These are just portions of essays. I couldn't fit the whole essay on the page. Um, but I'm going to change the slide and we're going to read through the first essay together. I'll give you a couple of seconds to sort of jot down some notes. I'll switch the slide again. We'll read through the second and then we'll we'll come together and we'll have a little discussion. I'm really excited to see sort of what your thoughts are on the essays and what stands out to you um, about, about each of the pieces. So this first essay is a student who chose to write about his grandmother um, and her tradition of um, making kimchi together. And so um, she is um, struggling with a, an Alzheimer's diagnosis, and he is just sort of reflecting on that. So I'm going to leave this up on the screen for about, let's say, three minutes um, so that you can read through it and take down some notes. And then in three minutes, I will switch the slide and we will look at the second excerpt. All right, awesome. So take about 30 more seconds, look through, make note of what sort of stood out to you. It can be something that you really like. It can be something that you think maybe they could improve on. Whatever it is that you notice, take note of it. And then I will switch to our second um, excerpt in just a couple of seconds. All right, and so this is the second excerpt, and this student is writing about the role that The Daily Show, the TV show, The Daily Show, has had on them. So very different subject, very different 
um, sort of approach to writing. So take a look, read through, and make some notes about what you like, what you don't like. All right, take about 30 more seconds with this, um, this slide. And then I know some of you have already started throwing some of your thoughts in the chat. Um, feel free to continue to do so. And then together, I'm going to sort of walk us through the, the first example and the second example um, and just sort of talk a little bit about, from my perspective, like if I was sitting down with this essay, what I would have noticed and what I would have pulled from, from these two very, very different um, but awesome stories. All right, awesome. So I appreciate you all taking the time to be thoughtful and reading through them. Um, and so uh, I'm going to sort of flip back to our first example um, and walk us through it. I know a lot of you found this to be very moving. The topic was certainly very, very personal to this student. It's clear um, that their relationship with their grandmother was a super meaningful one. And so this is an example of centering um, another person in your story, right? And having, having the essay be about a person or a place or a memory that has had a significant impact on you. But still, again, and we're going to say, I'm going to say it again, making yourself the main character. Um, and so things that the student did really well, um, there's a lot of detail, right? Some, I can almost, I'm almost there in the kitchen. I can like smell the kimchi, I can smell the chili, I can smell all of it. Um, and so that sort of really bringing the reader in and opening that story up, being as descriptive as you can, um, 
is is going to be really important as you sit down to write. And I see a lot of you being like, if this is an example of what a college essay looks like, I'm in trouble. Please don't worry. This was not the student's first draft. Um, they probably wrote a lot of drafts before this. They probably showed it to a lot of different people. They got a lot of advice. Um, and so please don't look at this finished product and say, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna be able to get there. Because you're comparing your like initial, the very start of your process to the end of somebody else's. You can get here. Um, that's why we encourage you to take, give yourself plenty of time to write your personal essay, take some step, take a step back from it, revisit it, go back, edit it, give it to a trusted friend or family member to read and edit someone who'll be honest and tell you what works and what doesn't, um, but also who really trusts you, you as a writer and knows um, that you are, are able to sort of shape your own voice. Um, and so it looks like we've got some like different opinions about how successful the student was um, in terms of making themselves the main character. Um, and that's a really great, right? That's a really great question. Um, is this too much about the grandmother? Did they actually sort of put themselves in the story? So it's certainly sweet. It's certainly a warm story. It was written really well. And I would say that if I was sitting down and looking at this story, there is enough of this student there for me to really get a sense of what matters to him, um, you know, what has really been a, a significant influence in his life, and also, you know, where he seems to himself going as a writer. Um, and so he's obviously someone who who's deeply caring and committed. Um, he loves writing and the written word and sees that as a way of sort of preserving his memories and um, his grandmother's legacy. So even though it's about his grandmother on the surface, there is enough of him in there for me to really see, you know, what matters to him and what, um, what he needs to, um, to feel fulfilled um, and who he might be as a roommate, right? Like, I would want someone like this um, who is caring and supportive um, to be a, a roommate, right? I would want this student as my roommate. He seems awesome. He's kind. He's supportive. He loves writing. Um, and so even though on the surface this is about his grandmother and the sort of ritual that they have of making kimchi together, there's much more sort of below the surface. Um, and so as we're reviewing applications, that's also what we're doing is we're not just sort of reading the essay surface level, we're really taking a step back and seeing what is what is written, but also what's written sort of underneath the surface that we can learn about the student. And so on sort of the entire flip side of the coin, this story is very, very different, right? A very different approach to writing, a very different style of writer. Um, and also, um, like a very just different take. This one's a little bit more lighthearted. It is much more focused um, on, on something that's maybe like a little bit more quirky about the student. Um, things that are really interesting about this essay is how um, they have sort of framed the Daily Show as a class in their life. Like clearly I can tell that they're a student who's passionate about politics, um and about current events that they are really sort of engaged that they have a lot of questions that they're curious so all of those things i'm able to pull just from this sort of little excerpt but it's also sort of quirky and funny and very different in tone from the from the kimchi essay and both of them do an amazing job of capturing who those students are and so when you sit down to to write your essays as Lewis said, I don't want you to sound like the student who wrote the kimchi essay, and I don't want you to sound like the student who wrote this essay about The Daily Show. I want you to sound like you. I want you to sound like the person that's gonna be writing your story. Um, and so, you know, everyone writes differently because the way that you write is very much tied to, to you. Um, and so you shouldn't try to copy anyone's style of writing or make yourself sound like anyone else 
but you, because that's really what we're looking for is we're looking to get a little bit of a sense of who you are out of your essay. Um, and so this student does a really wonderful job also of sort of not only talking about the love of The Daily Show and sort of what it has meant to them in the moment, but also sort of looking ahead and saying, okay, Am I excuse right when they write, was I excusing myself from the responsibility of taking a position on key issues? That shows me that there's like a level of self-reflection there. It shows me that they are thinking about their role in a larger community. So there's a way to sort of weave things into your personal essay and it all ties back to writing about your why and not just your what. And it's easier said than done. And I can promise you it is not gonna happen in your first draft. And it might not happen in your second or even your third draft, but you will get there. And one of my biggest tips for students, and it's going to make you feel a little bit strange, but it goes back actually to Jessica's earlier point about recording yourself and the tip that your mentor gave you to record yourself talking. Read your essay out loud. And when you read your essay to yourself in the mirror or to a trusted friend, does it sound like you? Does it sound natural? Um, you know, reading it out loud and reading your own story can really give you a sense of how it might sound to somebody else. And as you read it out loud, you can make notes in the margins about, okay, this one, this sounded a little bit weird, or this didn't, this sentence didn't sound um, like me. And so that is also a really great tip is to to hear your words out loud is also a great way to process and edit and revise so revision is going to be a huge part of this process and both of these excerpts as i mentioned before are finished products and you guys are just at the beginning and so please don't look at these and think oh my gosh i'm never going to write an essay like that because you will and it'll be just as meaningful because it'll be your story and it'll be your voice and you will be the main character and so it will be just as impactful and just as powerful as you found these students' stories to be. So please don't doubt yourself. That is gonna be a huge takeaway um, from, from this session tonight. If you take one thing away, or two things, if you take two things away, it'll be that you are the main character and that your story matters and that you don't have to write it any other way than through your voice um, because that that is the most important piece. So before we, so we're gonna make sure that we save a little bit of time for Q and A. Um, and so I want to sort of do a little bit of wrap up and just like sort of as we move out of talking about the role of the personal essay and um, how to even start maybe writing the personal essay, just things to remember as we move forward. Um, and so yes. You are the main character. That is definitely one of them. Um, this is not your autobiography. Do not try to cover everything, right? You are never going to fit your entire life story into this, into this essay. I saw a question earlier about word count. It is certainly not enough to fit your entire life story. So it's really important to take a step back and think about what you want someone like me to walk away having learned about you from that essay and then pick a topic um, that really sort of is is a good messenger for for that takeaway um, and so you don't have to fit everything about yourself into this essay if you try it'll be an impossible endeavor Right? I didn't learn everything about the student who loves the daily show and I certainly didn't learn everything about the student um, that made kimchi with his grandmother. But I learned enough to know that they are really cool students and students that I might wanna have on a college campus um, when I'm reviewing their applications. And so definitely try to keep that in mind as, as you're sitting down to write your personal essay and try to be more narrow in the topic that you're choosing. Um, and along those lines, there is no perfect topic, right? There is no topic that you can write about that is gonna guarantee that you get in to that particular school. It's much more about how you write it um, and then what you write about and making sure again that you're centering yourself um, and what matters most to you in that story and that you're writing it in your own voice and that you've really sort of settled into that, right? Own your voice, 
Your voice is the most important thing here. And so make sure that you really, really own it and don't be, a, don't be afraid of it. Um, and finally, I would not be a good college admissions professional if I didn't tell you to please edit your essays. I know it's not English class. I know that it can be tedious. And when you've read an essay 8 million times, reading it again to check for, for capital letters and commas in the right place is so annoying. Um, and it's not, I'll tell you a little bit of a secret, at least for me, it's not that I mind typos because I am also a human being that types very fast and often has typos in my work. It's that it's indicative about of the amount of time that you have spent, right? We want to know that you took the extra time to read that um, and to go through and to care about your work and your words. I am a human being. I misspell words all of the time. And so some of those things we, we just know happen. It's more about making sure that, that you're showing to us that you've taken the time to really care about this piece of work, to invest in it, um, because it, because it is important. And so I am just going to wrap up before I answer some of the questions that have come in to talk a little bit about the sort of the COVID-19 pandemic and what it means for personal essays. I've gotten a lot of questions from students lately who are really worried as schools become test optional and more focus is put on different parts of the application. A lot of students are worried. Um, and I would just say, you know, personal essays have always mattered. It is not going to drastically change the way that we view the personal essay. Um, and it's also not necessarily the time um, where you have to write about COVID-19. So Common Application, the Coalition Application, a bunch of different application platforms are going to actually have a dedicated space where you can write about how COVID-19 has impacted you both academically and personally. And they're giving you that dedicated space so that you do not have to feel like you need to write your personal essay about COVID-19. You may still choose to write your personal essay about your experience with the pandemic, and that is okay. But please don't feel like you have to. If you feel like there's something that you really need us to know about the way that the pandemic has impacted you and your family, whether that be academically, in school, or just personally, um, there is a dedicated place to do that. You don't need to use your personal essay unless you feel like you really need to. Um, and so that's just something to remember. COVID-19 has impacted our communities in a lot of different ways, but it is not going to drastically change the way that we review applications, right? We're still going to commit ourselves to understanding the whole student, to knowing who you are and where you're coming from and who you want to be. All of those things are going to remain the same about our review process. Um, going test optional, removing standardized testing, it doesn't, it doesn't change that, right? It doesn't suddenly throw everything off kilter. It just means that we're looking more meaningfully at what we have in front of us and not thinking about what we don't have. Um, and so really just, again, right? If I don't say it one more time, will you remember? Be the main character of your own story. Be proud of who you are and the work that you have put in um, and write about it. Um, it can be funny if you're funny. It can be funny if you're not funny, right? I definitely am not a naturally funny person. I definitely also tried to be funny in my college essay. I don't think it worked, um, but it felt right in the moment. And so that's what I did. Um, and so it's okay to trust yourself and know, trust your gut about what is right for you in terms of writing and sharing your own story. So in that, I am going, so my email is on the screen, and you can feel free to email me anytime. Questions about Colby, questions not about Colby, right? If you just have a question about the college process, um, or you have a follow-up question to this presentation, just send me an email. You do not have to be applying to Colby to ask me questions. I am a resource for you for any question that you might have about the college process, whether it's Colby related or not. Um, I know there was a question earlier about whether or not those two essays were students who had applied to Colby. They were not. 
um, they were taken from um, sort of like a public database of, of examples of, of personal essays that have been submitted in past years. So those were not students who applied to Colby. Um, they were just two sort of great examples that I had chosen because they sort of showed the very different approaches to writing and crafting your personal essay. So feel free to take down my email. I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and I'm going to shift my attention to the Q&A for a few minutes, for the few minutes that we have left together. Um, I hope this has been helpful. I hope if you take anything away, you just take away the fact that I think you all are fantastic and I trust you to write and share your own stories, right? Because you're the person who has lived them. And so there is no better person to write about you than you, right? There's no better person that can write your own story than you. And you're the person that knows how to write that story. So trust yourself, center yourself in that story and in that narrative, and you'll be just fine. So with that, I'm gonna move over to questions. And I know Lewis has been in here answering some as well. Um, and so I'm going to um, share some of some of my thoughts and some of Lewis's thoughts as well. But I also want to make sure that I get to as many as possible. And I have a tendency to talk a lot. So um, some of them we've answered in our time together. Um, so are there resources for how to write or improve your essays for college? Yes. Um, so there are a few different places online. Um, but I would really just utilize, um, so while there are, I'm going to qualify this by saying, while there are places online that have a lot of tips and a lot of tricks, like I said, trusting yourself and trusting those who know you the most is going to be the most helpful. So before you sort of get worried and go looking for answers online, just sort of sit with your own thoughts for a little bit, right? Make a couple, have a post-it note where you jot down ideas about things that might be great topics. And then, you know, write a couple of paragraphs about this one, write a couple of paragraphs about that one. And then if you have a friend that you trust, say, you know, hey, Lewis, I'm trying to figure out what to write my personal essay about. And I have these sort of three topics and I'm just not exactly sure um, what, um, what I should write about. Can you take a look and, and give me a sense of, of what works best or what you think is, is the best answer? Um, and, and if you trust them and you trust that they know you, they'll, they will be the most sort of useful resource to you because the internet doesn't know you, they don't know your story, they don't know who you are, but your friends do, your family do. Um, and so trusting them to give you feedback um, is also super helpful. How many words do you need? So this will be set by um, by the application. Typically, it's like 500 to 650 is typically the, the word count um, on an essay. Um, you will not be timed to write an essay. You can take as much time as you need. And again, edit, drafts, all of that. Um, you should not feel rushed. So starting now with the brainstorming process, um is is definitely going to be important and it'll give you plenty of time to make mistakes to change your mind um and that's definitely going to be an important part of the process um you said to make yourself the main character what if i'm writing from the pov of an inanimate object that i feel represents me should i write explicitly about how it connects to me um and i know i think Erica from College Greenlight, if I'm not mistaken. I was trying to keep an eye on the chat while I was talking, but there were a lot of tabs open. Um, I think Erica answered it really well. Um, you know, making yourself the main character, that includes your understanding of who you are um, and what represents who you are. And so for you, if that is talking from the perspective of an inanimate object, as long as it's clear to the person reading that that is what you're doing, um, and that that is how you're centering yourself in the story, that is completely fine. But that's a really wonderful question. What's the main thing that I look for in an essay? Lewis, oh, I love you. Yes, you, we're looking for you, your personality, your voice, your stories, your lived experiences. Um, we're looking for a little bit of you in any sort of way, shape or form that you feel comfortable sharing that with us. What are some pre-writing tips um, and some ways that you can start brainstorming and get started? Um, so there is an activity that I have actually led students through before as part of another workshop, and it's called the Essence List. And it's about making a list of um, 
there it's about making a list of things that remind you of you so for example like if i was making my essence list things that would run, remind myself of me is like my old boston red Sox cap and probably an empty starbucks cup because i always have starbucks on me and a stack of post-it notes because i'm constantly writing notes to myself um and all of these little things and then from that list of your essence objects the things that remind you of you you can sort of find things, find a topic that might might surprise you, right? It might be your favorite candy from when you were a kid that sparks a memory about something else. Um, and suddenly you have an idea for an essay. Um, and so thinking about not only big life events and big moments that have sort of shaped you, but just things about you that you think are special and that you think are important and that really make you who you are can be helpful. So always start with just like a brainstorm and don't sit down and be like, okay, this is my 30 minutes to brainstorm my essay topic. Let it sort of come and go naturally, right? Just have a running list on your phone. You might make a list or on a post-it note if you're old school. Um, but having that sort of constant brainstorm process can be really helpful because you never know when you never know when sort of creativity might strike and you might come up with a topic. So I think I have actually run out of time. <laughs> um, and so I am going um, to pass it back over to Cassandra um, to, to wrap us up. Um, and again, I will throw my email in the chat so that you all have it. Um, but it has been so lovely talking with you spending some time with you. Um, and if I could give you any piece of advice, more than I've already probably, more probably than I've shared with you already, which is probably too much, um, is that this is a stressful, stressful process and we understand that. Um, and what I hope you know is that there are people like me sitting on the other side, really excited to learn about you and hear your stories and hopefully admit you um, and that we are cheering for you, right? We are rooting for you. We are hoping that that it works out and we are your biggest champions. Um, and so I hope that you know that. I hope that you're never scared to reach out to us for advice or for help. It is what we're here for. Um, Lewis, I think is echoing my statement and is more than happy to be a resource for you as well. Um, but give yourself some grace and some empathy and take some time, right? Dedicate some time to not think about college also. Don't let it overtake your life. Um, dedicate some time to just enjoying your junior or your senior year. It's important to chip away and to work and to not sort of save all of this until the last moment. But please, please, please don't let it become the center of your universe. It will all get done. It'll all get turned in, I promise. Um, but now more than ever, it's important that you give yourself some grace and some empathy and really just be proud of how far you've come already and how far you have left to go. Um, and so with that, I'm going to pass it back to Cassandra for real this time. Um, but I hope to hear from a few of you with questions. Lewis and I are always here to support you in any way that we can, whether it be Colby related or otherwise. Lisa, I feel like I just like took a yoga class or something. I feel very at ease. Like I'm not, I graduated from college already and I feel like I kind of want to do it again. Like this is my hype for like applying to grad school or something. <laughs> oh, you nailed it. Um, well, thank you so much. I was going to ask if you had any parting words, but my goodness, like what else, what else is there? You nailed it. Um, well, audience, I'm sure that Mace will be able to see this all of like the thanks and gratitude in the corner. Erica is also gearing up for her master's program now because we're both so hyped. <laughs> um, and you guys, if you could help Colby College out, they'd love to hear your thoughts on the presentation. So the button below is gonna change to a um, survey option. And once you have an extra couple of minutes, it only takes two minutes um, and fill out the post survey, it'll help them out a lot. And then once you're done, don't go anywhere. In five minutes, Colorado College's presentation is coming up. So fill out that survey, give your thanks, and stay tuned.
such a positive environment right now, you guys. I love it. Same with College Greenlight, you guys. Um, if for some reason, like, you miss anything about this, don't worry. You'll be able to get the um, presentations afterwards. But also, if you ever have questions or anything, reach out to us on Twitter. Um, DM us on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, we can do everything that we can to help you out when it comes to looking for your best fit school. And if you missed it earlier, capex.com forward slash greenlight dash student is going to be your way to sign up for your free account and uh, get going with all of your college research. Some good vibes sticking around. Um, you guys do have a couple more minutes to get that survey done. So if you can keep an eye out for that. Um, thanks for you guys that are sticking through us for, the, for week two of Thursday Night Football. I don't know if you're excited, but I am. Um, but this is a good way to like get you excited going into the night. That survey button is live now, just so you guys know. Um, yeah, if you can do that. So uh, the next presentation with Colorado College doesn't start for another four minutes. So you have plenty of time to just drop a couple of thoughts. You guys really loved Mesa, and I'm sure that she would love to see that feedback. All right, in these last couple of minutes, said this the last time, I'll say it again, take your break, get up and stretch, grab some water, maybe grab a snack, possibly dinner, depending on where you are right now. Um, I know I'm getting hungry, but uh, yeah, water, snack, stretching break, maybe a bathroom break, and then get ready for our next presentation with Colorado College. Ready. I'm going to change the room. Thank you so much, you guys. This is where I sign off for the evening. Um, you guys are doing great. Stick through for one more, and you'll be ready to go for this application season. So thank you so much. <laughs>